Welcome back to Capra Review. We're talking to House Majority Leader Senny Hoyer. And Leader Hoyer, the momentum for the Build Back Better plan has slowed down after a pass in the House. That was expected. But if it gets sent back to the House with a more narrow bill, what would happen next? How do you decide which part stays and which goes? Well, of course, the Senate will decide that in terms of what they delete from our bill. I think the bill that we sent them uh, was a very good bill and would make a difference in the lives of millions and millions, frankly, every American. Um, and we'll see what the Senate can pass. There are obviously some provisions in the Senate that a couple of senators, uh, at least one senator, uh, has reservations about. So they're going to have to get a bill that can get 50 uh, votes uh, because no Republican is supporting these bills. But these bills are extraordinary. And I think child care and preschool falls in that category. I think home care. And, and let me go back to child care and, and uh, preschool. So critically important so that Americans who want to work can get back to work and have confidence that their children are in a good and safe uh, setting. Prescription drug policies. We bring the prices down of prescription drugs. So the Build Back Better deals with so many critical items, including housing and very, very importantly, uh, climate. Climate is an existential threat uh, to the welfare of our people and our, and our uh, economics. Uh, we, need, we need to deal with that in a very, very robust and effective way, and Build Back Better does that. So I am hopeful that uh, the Senate, uh, over the next uh, uh, few months, will come to a place where they can uh, pass most of what we sent them in Build Back Better, perhaps not all. And when they send it back, I'm confident that we'll have um, a lot of very, very important pieces of uh, legislation. And Representative Hoyer, a topic that Marylanders care about, better roads and bridges. What improvement projects can Maryland as a state and also the 5th Congressional District expect from the bipartisan infrastructure law? Well, look, I, I think we were a real winner in this law. Uh, Maryland's going to get $7.4 billion. The infrastructure bill deals not just with roads, bridges, and highways. And by the way, in, in Maryland, over the next five years, we're going to get about $400 and $10 million for roads, bridges, and highways, $158 million for our airports, and $4.1 billion in highway funding uh, over the next uh, five to 10 years. Uh, so very substantial resources to make sure that we can get to work on safe roads, uh, that we can have mass transit funded properly, uh, that, uh, frankly, uh, we can deal with broadband uh, and water uh, purity, both uh, in terms of drinking water, in terms of wastewater, making it uh, in, in the Chesapeake Bay. Very, very important uh, provision. So the infrastructure bill, which passed with a bipartisan vote in both houses and is now uh, signed into law by the president and is being implemented as we speak, very important for our physical, fiscal, for our physical investment in infrastructure in the state of Maryland and throughout the country, which will make us more competitive and create opportunities and jobs for millions of people. And speaking of getting to work, I want to talk about the Make It in America plan that you first actually introduced 12 years ago to help American businesses. You've actually made some changes to it now. We're dealing with the supply chain shortages and the effects of the pandemic. So why is the Make It in America plan relevant now? Well, Make It in America is relevant now and more relevant than when I uh, uh, start putting it forward in 2010. The reason it's more relevant, what the pandemic has shown us is that we are reliant on so many foreign suppliers uh, for absolutely critical uh, needs. Uh, obviously, we saw that in terms of the, the, the uh, medical needs, whether it was masks, whether it was uh, syringes, whether it was aprons, uh, whatever it, it might have been. We found that we were relying on foreign suppliers. And then, of course, because the pandemic shut down so many factories that were producing chips, absolutely essential to the production of so many different goods, particularly cars. One third of inflation uh, in our country is related to automobiles. One third of our inflation. And one of the reasons is because we're not producing uh, cars. Why? Because they don't have the chips. Make it in America is critically important for our independence and for our national security and for the creation of jobs, good paying jobs for our people. So the House is now taking up now the American Competes Act of 2022. What would be the direct result of that bill to the DMV? Well, uh, for one thing, it would be uh, that we will have chips uh, produced in this country. 
uh, whether they'll be in, produced in Maryland, that's going to be the private sector decision. But uh, that is a $50 billion investment in America's ability to compete. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the, the competes bill will provide for educational opportunities uh, for people, uh, entrepreneurship opportunities, uh, and, and continuing infrastructure investment. So the America Competes Act uh, will help Maryland because uh, Maryland is a state that has a lot of talent, uh, technical talent, uh, other talent. Uh, we have a lot of uh, computer uh, operations and technical operations in our state. Biomedical research is big in our state. So the Competes Act is gonna energize all of those uh, enterprises. All right, House Majority Leader Cindy Hoyer, thank you so much for being here and for your time. Great to be with you. Thank you very much.